Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Abrams from Edmund Optics and I'm joined by Ryan Smith from ScannerMax and today we're going to be setting up uh, a compact 506 Galvo system. Um, to do that we have everything laid out in front of us. Uh, we have everything that you're going to need. You have the power supply which is sold separately. Uh, we have the European power supplies as well which we're going to set up. Uh, everything that comes with the Galvo, so the Mach TSP board itself, the Galvos which are in here, the, and all the connection cables. We have the Galvo to servo cables. We have the power cables. We have an analog cable. And then we have the USB to Galvo cable for software control, as well as uh, a selection of tools which you may or may not need depending on your system. Um, so Ryan, go ahead and walk us through how to set up the power supplies to start. Okay, thanks Jacob. So uh, like Jacob said, everything laid out here is what you're gonna get with the system. The most important thing that comes with the system is quick start guide here. This showed you how to make all the proper connections so everything works the first time as intended. Um, as Jacob said, the power supplies are the first thing we're going to talk about. Uh, if you buy a power supply from Edmund Optics, you're going to get the system needs plus or minus 24 volts. So for the U.S. market, we have a plus and minus 24 volt switching supply. For uh, the European and other markets, you're going to need two separate 24 volt supplies and we'll get into how to wire that here. Now the power supply is sold separately. If you purchase our power supply through Edmund Optics, you're gonna make your connections as shown on the diagram, either in the quick start guide, on the power supply box, or on the other documentation Edmund Optics provides. You've got your red, which is your plus 24, like we said, black is ground, blue is minus 24. You're gonna also wire the other side to your mains power where you're gonna need uh, your line, your neutral, and your ground connections. This cord's not supplied with the power supply because on different reasons you use different connections, but we recommend a three prong harness. Now for the European markets, due to EMC regulations and whatnot, we have to deliver two 24 volt power supplies. Again, please refer to the additional documentation that'll be provided with your systems and also on the Edmund Optics website, but you're gonna use your red, plus 24 volt to one power supply. You're gonna do your blue minus 24 volts to the minus on the other power supply. And then you're gonna connect one black wire, doesn't matter which one, one black wire to the unused terminals on each power supply. Again, please refer to the wiring diagrams provided with these power supplies and provided with the systems. And just to note, as Ryan said, these are sold separately. We sell these on our website. Uh, this is the US one, these are the European ones. These are just standard Meanwell uh, power supplies. Customers can use their own 24 volt power supply as long as they ensure they have the right current and voltage. Thanks, Jacob. You wanna uh, get into a little bit what else comes in the box once you, when you purchase a system from Edmund? Yeah, so right now we have everything that we need to set up the system. We got our power supplies. We have the mock DSP board. This is the brains. This is controls the Galvo and uh, connects to the computer for software control, as well as having analog control, which comes with this cable for analog control uh, with a function generator, DAC system, whatever analog device you have. Uh, it comes with the power cable, which is already wired up, as Ryan said, uh, mock DSP board. We have the Galvo in this box here. Um, when you get this, it will be screwed into place from the back. I don't know if we can see that, but it'll be screwed in place from the back. So you'll have to unscrew that. It comes with two or one uh, servo to Galvo cables, depending on which system you buy. If you get the one axis system, which is the, uh, in the Saturn series, you just get one. The compact and the other Saturn series are both dual axis. You'll get two of these. Uh, these are one meter standard, but we do sell additional cable lengths on our website from 25 centimeters up to eight meters. And then lastly, you'll get the, or excuse me, you'll get the uh, USB to uh, mock DSP cable. And then lastly, I almost forgot uh, the thermal paste. This is optional. This is for if you want to uh, connect the mock DSP to a, a heat sink or some sort of aluminum board or whatever. Um, but it's it's not required, but it is recommended if you're gonna mount it to something else. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Like, like we said, it's pretty simple to set up. The only external tools you should need are a small Phillips screwdriver for removing the galvos from the box, small flathead screwdriver for the power connections, and then a wire stripper to make your analog and your uh, power supply connections. Um, so like Jacob said, we've got the galvos that come in the box here. When you go ahead and start making these connections, uh, we recommend once you've got your power supply wired up, before connecting it to the Mach DSP, please, please, please verify your connections are correct. You can do this with a voltmeter, which is also not included with the system, but voltmeter, multimeter, most labs have these. Please make sure you have plus 24 volts with reference to ground 
on the red wire and minus 24 volts with reference to ground on the blue wire. Uh, once you're, you ensure those connections are properly made, you can go ahead and connect the power harness to the mock DSP and Jake would go ahead and connect the power supply to the mains power. And you'll see once everything's successfully connected, you'll get a nice green light on the power supply. You'll get some flashing lights here on the mock DSP. Next thing we wanna do is go ahead and get the galvos connected. You can connect these before or after uh, powering the system up. It's not gonna hurt it. You can hot plug it if you want, or some customers may prefer to uh, plug these in before powering it up. Both are fine. Um, Jacob, do you wanna talk about a little bit about which, how do you know which, uh, which galvo plugs into the mock DSP here? You know, there's a couple different ports here. How do you, is that important? How do we how do we do that? Yeah, so that's very important. I'll talk through that while Ryan go, wires this up. Um, polarity is, is very important to the system if you have the dual axis. If you have the single axis system, it doesn't matter which port you plug it into. It could be X or Y. But if you have the dual axis system, the X and the Y are very, very important. Again, please refer to the quick start guide that has all the information on how to properly connect everything. Um, so right now, Ryan has connected the X axis, which is the right or left side, excuse me, if you're looking at this from the front. And then the Y axis is the right side over here. And if you're confused on, on the Galvo, which is X, which is Y, again, it's in the quick start guide. Yeah, for everything we sell through Edmund, the X Galvo is the lower Galvo or the smaller mirror Galvo and the Y is the upper or the larger mirror Galvo. So X left and right Y. So now we've made most of our, you know, all of our electrical connections. We've got power going to the mock DSP. We've also connected our Galvos. And additionally, if you want some sort of analog control, uh, this plugs in right next to the X connection. Want to plug that in, right? Yep, you would connect this to your DAC, your arbitrary function generator, whatever you're going to use to drive analog signals on the mock DSP. That's how you're going to control it. And then the last connection needed going to be the USB core. This is the communication between the mock DSP software and the mock DSP servo driver. Jacob, could you give some information on where you get the software? Yeah. So before I plug this in the software, you can get the software from the Admin Optics website or from the Scanner Max website. It's an executable. You don't have to install anything. Um, you can see we have it up on the screen here now. Uh, once you run it, it'll look like this. Then you can go ahead and connect your uh, USB to Galvo plug, or excuse me, USB to mock a DSP plug. Go ahead and plug that into the front. And once you've got everything connected, powered up, ready to go, uh, next thing to do is once you plug it into your computer, uh, it'll automatically install the drivers for the FTDI chip. Um, what you want to do is go into your device manager to see which COM port it is actually plugged into. Um, so you have a COM port selection up here. Once we know that that's correct, you think everything's good to go, you can click connect. If everything's good to go, uh, you'll be taken to the main screen, and you can see there are uh, green lights indicating the status of the Galvo. If anything is wrong, wired incorrectly, not getting the right voltage, it's too hot, whatever the problem may be, it'll be indicated here with either a yellow or a red light uh, of something that needs to be fixed. Um, and once it opens up, it opens up right to the four tunings that come standard with every EO system. So Ryan, why don't you walk us through what the tunings are? Okay, thanks Jacob. Yeah, we'll do a quick run through of the software and the tunings. Uh, again, the mock DSP software downloaded from Edmund website. Uh, when you fire it up, this is, gonna, this is what you're gonna be seeing um, as the user interface. Um, it's pretty powerful software for, for what it is. You get a, a built-in oscilloscope. I think you'd sample 100 test points per axis, something like that. You also get a built-in test signal generator. Um, so for the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna check out the X Galvo. Maybe we'll wanna see the X Galvo, we'll wanna see the you know Galvo position. Maybe we'll take a look at what the actual commanded position is. Input command, maybe we'll keep an eye on coil voltage as well. Should be TP81, I believe, yeah, coil voltage. And maybe we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on coil current as well. Go ahead and hit run. As you can see, the galvos aren't moving. We have no signal coming into them yet. So uh, there's nothing on the scope. Now, using the built-in test signal generator, we could control the galvos with uh, square waves, sine waves, triangle wave, arbitrary waveform. And you can see as I start ramping up the frequency here a little bit and ramping up the amplitude, you'll hear the galvos start moving and you'll see the oscilloscope start to populate here. We've got just even just with this pretty slow waveform we're running you know, about 50 hertz we're still we're already pulling 5 10 15 20 volts 
from the power supply, um, showing the need for the plus or minus 24 volt supply. Um, but it's a big difference depending on what kind of waveform you're using. You can see uh, if I run it, at a, if I ramp up the, the frequency a little bit, we'll maybe push it to uh, 150 hertz and maybe push it to 15 degree, 12 degrees mechanically, you can see the scanner coil temp starting to ramp up a little bit. We're at 66C and climbing. If I push the frequency a little harder, maybe push it 200 Hertz. Now we're in the red, we're 78 degrees C and continuing to climb. Now, if we just watch, switch this over to a sine wave real quick, watch that temperature drop. The temperature's down to you know 30 degrees C, basically ambient temperature immediately. So this shows how important it is not uh, for waveform shaping when you're designing your OCT system, your microscopy system, whatever you're working with. Waveform uh, design and shaping is important to keep these temperatures down, keep these coil currents down, keep the system running efficiently. efficiently. Um, now when we get into the tunings a little bit, you know, we don't know um, when we deliver a system to a customer specifically what their goals are for the system. Uh, you know, OCT and microscopy have different uh, system requirements that may be a template projection application. They may have a different requirement from a uh, laser light show or a laser marking system. Uh, if you were to order this, you know, directly from Scanner Mac, we would configure it exactly for what you need but if you've heard about you know there's it, it takes us much longer to deliver a system so we partner with Edmund Optics to really make sure we're delivering these systems to the marketplace quickly and because we don't know what the customer is intending to do with the system we include four separate tunings on every system again referring back to the quick start guide uh, it'll tell you for your particular serial number what each of those four tunings are for so for this five millimeter compact 506 system the four tunings are what we call two kilohertz PD, two and a half kilohertz PD, three kilohertz PD, and two kilo and a half kilohertz PDF. The speed it has to do with the small signal bandwidth, and then the PD versus PDF has to do with the uh, uh, PID parameters, whether it's an integrating uh, tune, not integrating tune. This is all uh, in the further Pangolin Scanner Max uh, user manual, which is also available on the Edmund Optics and the Scanner Max website. Um, so that every system, we, we started up in what we call a, a startup tune. Um, not super optimized for everything on this one tuning we're running tuning three right now which is a three kilohertz pd tune it's not an integrating tune i believe as if we shipped this system it would have started up on tuning two which is a two and a half kilohertz pd tune but what we recommend is that once the customer figures out their parameters for the system they try all four tunings because it could be if you need high speed but not super high accuracy you can run a three kilohertz PD tune and it'll be fine for you. But somebody that's doing, you know, microscopy needs good repeatability. They might be better served by a PDF tune with an integrator. So again, we recommend you try all four tunings to see which one serves your application best. So the EO systems that we carry uh, ship with four preset tunings from ScannerMax, uh, but they all have the same checks and balances. So once it hits about 85C, the Galvo temperature, then it'll start to attenuate the signal to prevent damage and prevent overheating. Uh, but once it hits 95C, then the Galvo will, the Mach DSP will shut off the Galvo and let it cool down. And there are other, a whole bunch of other checks and balances that are all related to temperature. So temperature is very, very important to maintaining the health of this system. Yeah, a couple little tips and tricks here, you know, while we're trying to make this, uh, you know, smooth and easy for the customer. We also include this little hex key here. Um, we understand, you know, we, we tune this in our facility and we set it to what we believe hour zero is when we put a visible weight laser through it to get it all aligned. But this may not be what your zero is for your, where you're gonna be uh, either projecting your template or where you're gonna be scanning your subject. We include this little hex key and we don't actually recommend, we highly encourage that you use the hex key to loosen the Galvo in the block and then you can actually rotate the galvo back and forth in the block you know have your source going through it or have your camera looking at it whatever you need to do get the galvo zeroed in to whatever you believe that where you need it to be and then just use the hex key to tighten it back down to its new zero so that's a little little tip or trick rather than shimming the block up or down or whatever just just loosen the galvos rotate them and tighten them uh right back down as Jacob mentioned earlier, uh, the thermal paste comes with the system. We don't recommend using it on the Galvos themselves, but certainly if the Mach DSP is running hot, you can apply it to the back of the Mach DSP when you bolt it down to your base plate or your breadboard. Um, Galvos typically don't need any active cooling to them, but we do recommend you know, bolting it down to your base plate. It's got two countersunk screws from the top, or there's a hole pattern on the bottom. You can hold it, hold it to your base plate from the base. So. Just to recap everything that we've connected, um, we've got the power supplies, so the US one or the European or rest of the world. 
version, you need to provide your own power cable uh, to, the, to the mains connection. Uh, the connection, the wire harness from the power supply to the Mach DSP is included. Um, and then once you've got this all wired up, connect your Galvo using the servo to Galvo connection cables. Uh, if you want analog connection, that is also provided right there. It's already wired in here. Um, and then lastly, you have your USB to Galvo uh, or Mach DSP connection cable, which you'll control through the software if you're not using an analog connection. For additional assistance setting up your Galvo system, or for questions on customization or application suggestions, please contact our application engineers at edmundoptics.com.